Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 8. So over the past week, we have dived just headfirst into the latest graphic novel or story arc for The Flash Season 8 with a serial murderer out there on the loose in Central City who is not only a metahuman that appears to be like burning people from within without leaving really a trace of anything, but also they appear to be able to be invisible at will also. It's, it just sounds like quite the issue and just overall nightmare for Barry and Team Flash to be dealing with at this very moment. But last weekend from when this video will come out, we went over part one of an interview with the showrunner of The Flash, that of course being Eric Wallace, or Wallace, whichever way you want to pronounce it, where we specifically went over the reverse Flash stuff and his part of what we've already seen this season, and also what's coming later on this season with him as well. And now it's time for part two. Now this second part of the interview covers topics such as more future Central City, the legacy of the Flash as a whole, how the seeds planted in Armageddon start to bloom later into season eight, time sickness, lots of stuff. There's a good amount to talk about. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what from this gets you interested, which of these things are you the most excited for or just excited for in general. Very curious to hear what you guys have to say about that, as well as any theories and predictions you have as well, because some of this stuff might make you think, well, this could lead this way or this way or which way. There's many options you guys could have to leave down there, but let me know all that stuff in the comments. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, want to show support and just are excited for any of the stuff we go over, why not drop a like on the video to show support? helps the channel out. Now this, like part one, is an interview that was conducted by The Flash Podcast, and we will not go over everything that was done in this interview, as some of it is like not main plot focused, which is the main reason I do these interviews, because it, you know, gets us excited for what's to come. So we will just go over the main stuff, but the full interview with some things like, uh, for example, there's uh, something hinting at Nora's possible girlfriend in the future, in, in, in like a future episode and stuff like that. Uh, stuff from that interview and the whole interview, it's linked in the description down below for those wanting the entire thing. But let's start off. So you're directing The Flash for the first time this season, and I believe this is your first time since Teen Wolf. Can you share what it was like getting behind the camera? Yeah, I'd done a lot in reality television years earlier, then I'd done Teen Wolf. Running a show keeps you busy. It's funny because the cast, especially Danny Nicolette, kept saying, when are you going to direct one of our shows? When are you going to do this? Why isn't it happening now? It's season seven. You've got the show running thing down. Why are you wasting time for? And I'm like, it's a little intense with a global pandemic. I've got stuff on my mind. But I'm happy to report that Danny Nicolette can stop yelling at me. We finally did it. We all had a blast. We just had a really great time. I got the weird episode. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but maybe it's serendipitous because I have very weird tastes in a lot of the stuff that I like to do and the media that I like to consume. I have seen way too many David Lynch movies, obviously, when you watch something like The Last Temptation of Barry Allen Part 1, you're basically looking in my brain at that point, so I got the weird one. I was supposed to direct the super emo one, the one that I was crying about when I was watching the cut yesterday, but I think it worked out perfectly. We were able to explore Iris's time sickness, it's a big Iris time sickness episode, so I was very happy about that. Grant's performance, maybe he was doing me a solid, I don't know, but he's just fantastic in the episode. I'm not a megalomaniac, I'm not a dictator, I'm pretty Pretty much the same as I am here, but I'm pretty excited and definitely passionate when it comes to directing. It's not a subtle thing. If the take isn't working, I'll be like, Ugh, it's not working. It's not an inner monologue, it's an outer monologue. I might be a little inappropriate, but then I will dive in. I want to work as a collaborator with my actors, with my camera people, with costumes, and with all the department heads to create something special. I don't know if it's special, but it's definitely weird, and I hope people enjoy it because it's the trippy episode. That's what it's being called around here, the trippy episode. It's 8.15, or for those that need to have that deciphered, season eight, episode 15. Now about this and his episode he's directing, for those that need a bit of a reference point, the episode that Eric Wallace is directing is the episode where we saw that newspaper article cover thing that said Zoom and Godspeed destroy Central City. So yeah, you can tell what it means when he's saying like trippy episode, weird episode. Now in regards to how weird it gets outside of that, that's another question because we really didn't see, I don't think, too much from the filming of that episode outside of that newspaper thing. But we do know that Nora was on set or Jessica Parker Kennedy, who plays Nora, was on set for that episode. Whether she's actually Nora or it's like a vision that Barry's having, like some trippy thing, 
We don't know, but Eric does say that it's an Iris time sickness episode, but the big thing, and I think this is probably the best time to mention it, and we might mention it again later on with another question, but this is a good time to bring it up. Candace Patton hasn't really been in Vancouver. It's almost like she just isn't in the rest of these episodes. I'm really confused where Iris is and what's going on with Iris, you know, especially for the last like seven episodes of the season, because it just seems like Candace Patton hasn't been in Vancouver where they filmed the show. It just seems like she's been back in America, um, whether it's in LA or wherever she lives, um, like wherever she's from, you know what I mean, in America. So I'm not too sure what's going on, whether she literally disappears and it's maybe a mystery of them trying to figure out where she is along with fighting whoever this main villain is in the back half. I don't know. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on. I think it's a big question that a lot of people that are looking at behind the scenes stuff are wanting, you know, answered as well as I guess Iris fans as well. Yeah, because if your favorite character is not there, it's a bit of a concern. So I'm curious to see how it all plays out, but it's definitely a bit of a confusing one as to where Iris's place is you know, in the back half of this season and specifically around this time sickness stuff. Jessica Parker Kennedy mentioned finding out about Nora's daily life script by script. So I was wondering how much you've gone into Nora and Bart's lives and the time period they come from. Is that something you have mapped out in your mind or is it a case of inspiration striking in the moment? I have a two or three year plan for those characters that's ridiculously detailed. In season seven, episode 17, Bart talks about being a freshman in college. We have ideas specifically like, this is the college he goes to and this is what he studies. When we were building 806 as an episode at first, we were thinking maybe we go to the future, but it's a college adventure that they get involved in. That ended up being a little cost prohibitive, obviously, but I think those little things happen for a reason. And now just let's pause here because it's interesting. I think there's a question later in this interview about the comics, the Earth Prime comics. This is what the comic is, the Flash comic in the Earth Prime series that's coming out, which actually starts in just over a week from now. The Flash issue is Bart and Nora in the future and there's something in Bart's college and it's a storyline around that. So it seems like maybe they took elements or maybe just the entire idea of what episode six of this season was originally going to be and put it into that comic because... I mean, comic is art and words. It's not, you know, filming on set and creating VFX and everything like that. So it seems that they, I guess, translated that into a comic because they couldn't do it on the show. But anyway, back to the rest of this answer. I think it ended up being the right thing at the right time because by going back to our show's past, it allowed us to explore what happens when the Flash is the Flash, but he's not the Flash yet because he's in a coma for nine months. Aren't all those villains still out and about doing things? It made us go... Who was stopping all the bad people at, the, at that point? Who was fighting crime? The kids were. You kind of stumble into these things. But one of the things I'm most excited about is seeing more of it. You get a little hint of that in season eight, episode 13, the one I just finished last week. There are many more hints to Nora's future and really what she's doing now as a character in 2049 that are very different from what we've seen so far. I'm very excited to share that with the audience and I know Jessica was very excited. Now, I have to say this because I think just the focus in, now this spin-off, well not spin-off comic, but this issue in the Earth Prime comic series, the episode early this season, even just the fact that he has a detailed plan, it makes me wonder whether they are legitimately wanting to do something with Bart and Nora going forward. Now, I've seen people come up with the idea, oh, it could just be, you know, if Grant Gustin wants to leave in season nine, they can do a Flash season 10 and it's just Bart and Nora and maybe Bart officially takes on the mantle of the Flash like they were hinting at in episode six of the season and like Bart sort of struggle, you know, with the, you know, struggle with thinking that he could take that mantle and that's what season 10 is, him actually becoming the Flash. But there's a big track record of removing your main lead character in the face of the show and putting someone in there and it just failing from the beginning or just failing from the get-go. I think if you're going to do that, it would have to be a spin-off show. That's probably the best way to go about it. So it's it's like its own separate entity, but um, it just seems like there's a lot of focus on it, but who knows what they got planned. I have no idea. I don't work there. One thing that we've talked about a lot for this season is leveling up. <laughs> I know that's just going to trigger people from the get-go, but yeah, no one wants to play video games anymore because of the term leveling up so much this season. But anyway, Barry is constantly in the process of becoming the dude that gets a whole museum based on his legacy. What are some important steps he's taking towards that legacy this season and how are you paving the path for him to reach it? Obviously, this season's theme this year is 
everybody leveling up in different ways. And that could be leveling up power wise or emotionally. For Barry, it's a little bit of both. We saw in Armageddon, the physical part of leveling up. In 802, he releases this huge wild discharge to knock somebody out. We've never seen anything like that before. So we know where he is leveling up power wise and how that will kind of work. And obviously there's more of that throughout the season. But how does he level up emotionally? You have to do that as a team leader by leading the team through situations they've never been through before. You've got to level up emotionally. That's what the whole middle graphic novel of the season is all about. It's about how he levels up as a leader and guiding the team through some really tough emotional times. I know that the back half of the season will put Barry and Iris through the ringer because of the time sickness, but are there any chances of seeing them having a few moments here and there where they get to do happy, normal married things? There's a hint of that in the very first episode of the middle graphic novel, which pause is the episode we just watched this week, by the way. I don't want to give away numbers because the way we get into it is a little surprising this year. One of the things I like about the middle graphic novel is that it doesn't feel so definitive. I wanted to introduce the big bad for the middle of the season in a slower burn way, I guess you'd call it. I don't want to spoil that, but that episode starts with Barry and Iris at home. It starts with them at home and it's a normal day. And then of course it's a comic book show and something happens that interrupts the fun. You do get a little bit of that, but our stories tend to burn so hot because they're more serialized than ever. When we were more episodic, we were able to show more of the day-to-day -day things. So this is interesting. There's a lot of uh, hot puns and heating up. So obviously <laughs> this was heating at, you know, or not heating, but hinting at, you know, what's coming our way and what we're already introduced to uh, in the first episode of this new graphic novel we're in with this, you know, mysterious, burning, invisible, floating metahuman thing. Now, I don't know if this is specifically saying that this thing that's going around killing is the big bad for this graphic novel, I wonder if there's a twist or two coming in here or there. That's for us to wait and find out. We're only one episode in. Um, but I don't know. After Armageddon, I don't want to judge, you know, jump to conclusions too quickly as to what we think we should be dealing with and everything like that. So I'm just going to let it play out on the show and not predict too much. As we go into season 8B, do you have any comic book runs or authors that you would say are recommended reading if someone wanted to prepare themselves? That's tricky after Armageddon, which was the most comic booky because we took an actual premise from the Armageddon storyline. Even though we twisted it completely, the bare bones of the Armageddon story are the same only in that case it was which hero of earth is going to destroy the planet and bring about armageddon and all that stuff we knew we couldn't have the entire justice league we just had the flash so we just said it's somebody coming back from the future saying it's going to be you flash it is inspired by that but that's really the biggest comic book influence storyline this season if anything i would say the remaining graphic novels of this season find their inspiration in season one of the flash we're going to look back to the past because I think if someone has time sickness, it just kind of lends itself that way. It's kind of obvious or they're spun off of where the show has been going over the last few years, especially season six and seven. I would say you don't need to really dig in too deeply to anything, but the comics are great. So please support the Flash comic books too. I think they're important also. The way that we look at Godspeed would never happen if it wasn't for Joshua's run on the comic book of the Flash. We took his great writing as our inspiration and then kind of ran with it. I do think the comic books are an important part and continue to be an important part of the history of The Flash and how it relates to our show. So this has me very interested because we've already gone over that, the fact that the show tends to use these inspirations from the comics on the covers of their sort of like daily things, like their folders. And we went over the fact like a maybe like a month, month and a half ago or something like that that they had the Legion of Zoom comic cover on one of the folders, which, you know, we know that Reverse Flash is playing into the back half of this season. Then we saw Zoom and Godspeed on the newspaper article. And then we're told that all these, you know, there's going to be returning characters from the past showing up. It just led to a Legion of Zoom type storyline. So if anything, I think this could maybe be Eric Wallace avoiding the question. Like, because he doesn't want to give spoilers. So I think this might be him avoiding the spoilers because he's not going to go, yeah, we're adapting something from Rebirth again. Or all of the stuff we're adapting is from Rebirth this season. So get reading and nothing can be a surprise. So while I don't think anything's going to be a direct adaptation, because I personally don't don't really care for that too much you know if you want the direct story read the comic but i like twisting and involving different things and you know making a bit of a melting pot of stories so i'm excited to see what they do but i don't really buy that it's not inspired by the comics because that just seems really odd especially when there's still a good handful of villains and storylines that you can use for the show that are you know things that people want to see and the final question comes here it's a bit of a long one as well it's probably the longest one we have to go over so just brace yourselves you've given us a lot of great insight into what's coming up but is there anything we haven't asked that you would love to bring up for people watching this at home 
after the mid-season premiere. Yeah, I would say that every single thing you saw in Armageddon was there for a reason. And the seeds of a lot of those stories are now going to blossom. Those are the stories that become the graphic novels that you're going to see later on in the season. Everything has a purpose. It's not a coincidence that Caitlin says she's going on a date in season eight, episode one. You're seeing a glimpse into her journey that's going to happen for the rest of the season. It is definitely not a coincidence that Allegra gets new responsibilities and is taking over Central City Citizen Media. That's all part of the plan of the season. It is not at all a coincidence that Iris's time sickness seems to have disappeared for a little bit and then a comb disappears. That's a prelude. We're literally giving you the signals that this is all coming to a head at the end of season eight. And I'll tell you something else. I was talking to the staff about this. These three seasons of season six, seven, and eight were all part of one big master plan. Everything you've seen along the way has been leading towards the finale of season eight. Everything has been deliberate. COVID threw us a couple of curveballs here and there, but in general, we're pretty much sticking to what I originally planned for the three seasons that I hope we would have. If that is allowed to come to fruition, and we are allowed to go into season nine, which we know is going to be happening because this I'm doing this after that the renewal news came out, a new plan will then start. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at how every single character is going to kind of come to a specific place at the end of season eight that we've hinted at already. What would be next for them? But also how can we wrap it up in a satisfying way at the end of season eight? Because I don't know if I'm writing a series finale or season finale. I'm just like, y'all, I don't know when I will know. So I have to think in terms of two things. Now, obviously this is all irrelevant now because we know season nine's happening. I even think at this time that Eric Wells did this interview. He knew season nine was happening, but it wasn't official at that point. So he sort of has to just pretend like he's in the, you know, in the woods like everyone else. I think that's why we're doing so many crazy things this year in that last graphic novel, just in case these are the final flash stories we ever get to tell. There's certain things we just have to do, not to be negative or depressing. Again, I hope there is more and I'm cautiously optimistic. I think we all are. We all read that Grant has agreed if there is a ninth season that he will be a part of it and that's a huge thing let's see what happens from here but right now i want to just focus on telling a satisfying conclusion to this three-year tale which will become even more obvious it's another reason why in season eight something you should look for is more nods to the past we're dealing with the time sickness story so you will see some people from the past as we saw in 806 coming back that allows us to reflect upon the journey that we've all been on together for eight seasons and hopefully for you guys it will be as satisfying so i am incredibly intrigued to see how this season wraps up if it was also sort of meant to be leading into a potential series finale finale as well even though as i said i think they probably knew whether season nine was happening or not before green lighting whatever the finale script was and obviously choosing which script to film. And also they're still filming. They haven't actually filmed it actually now that they think about it. I think they've got two episodes left to go. So even now they're still, they, they know that they're coming back for season nine. So they know exactly how to end the season, even though the, the, the episodes leading up to that obviously might've been leading into a potential series finale as well. Now I'm very curious to see whether like, like to see how it all wraps up if this was meant to be one big master plan. So are we meant to see like blood work come back from season six and he plays into something. We know we saw that Zoom and Godspeed, you know, newspaper article, does Godspeed return? Eric Walls has hinted at his return um, for this season season already so whether we see that is another question but obviously it is a bit difficult to piece it all together so even though Eric Wallace is teasing us a lot with certain elements that will be in this season he isn't just going oh here's the script read all the spoilers because we don't want that we want to watch the show and be surprised like well why would you want to know you want to watch it and be surprised don't you and enjoy it as much as you can but thanks for watching guys as i said early in the video the link to the entire uh interview will be in the description down below if you want to go check out the entire thing i might do some videos based off some small things from this interview that's paired up with like general information that gets released through descriptions or just the general episodes over the next week or so and just piece them together if i need to keep your eyes for or keep your eyes out i guess for that stuff but of course if you enjoyed the video it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show support let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this and if you read anything differently that Eric Wallace said that I did, you know, you might think it's it means something different. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's the case. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.